안녕하십니까 이존 치과의 손영희입니다. Greetings, I'm Dr. Son Younghee of Eagle Dental Clinic. Today I want to talk about complications that may occur after implant placement. These are the kind of complications that we hope not to face, and I want to address them in today's lecture. What kind of complications are there? There can be implant fracture. In that case, implant removal will be required. There can also be disintegration. And albeit less frequently, there can be cluster phenomenon. And the patient may have allergy to titanium. I want to address them briefly. Implant fracture occurs most frequently. Implants are placed widely these days. The inadequate fit with suprastructure can be the cause, or overload can be another cause if the patient has strong occlusal force, or if the patient has parafunction such as bruxism. There can be problems if uh, the design of the superstructure is made so that there's a lot of lateral force application, it can lead to problems. Implant fractures can occur also when implant is placed in the wrong position or when implant diameter is smaller than it should be. Also, when internal submerged implant is placed due to adjacent bone loss, so when there is crystal bone loss, the implant strength goes down significantly, hence this can lead to implant fracture. When stress is increased, also implant fractures can occur. This is recommended implant diameter for different areas. In the case of molar area, 5 mm diameter is recommended. And in the case of upper anterior, except for number 2, 4 mm is recommended. In the case of lateral incisor, 3.5 mm is recommended. As for lower anterior, 3 mm diameter is recommended. If possible, Placing larger diameter implant is more favorable, realistically. The recommended diameter, if you place implant that is larger than the recommendation in terms of implant fracture prevention, it will be more favorable. Now we need to talk about implant removal. How can we do this? Up until now, the conventional way was to use trafine drill to do implant removal. As shown here, implant has been fractured. This implant is fractured. It is uh, mesially fractured. If you look at the CT, this is a buccal side and you can see fracture. The patient was referred to me for implant removal. If you use trafine drill as shown, following the exterior wall of the implant, this kind of gap is formed and like doing natural tooth extraction, lever action is used to remove implant. You can see that implant has been removed like this. This patient was referred to me, so I just did suture. You can see that in the post-op CT, the defect is quite significant. So I sent the patient back. An implant was placed again. If you look over here, fracture occurred once again. So it's been quite some time since fracture occurred. Flap was reflected. Trafine drill was used. And if you do drilling, you can see that there is a symmetry around the implant using lever action. If you carefully use the elevator, then the implant can be removed as shown. The bone that has been osteointegrated also comes out, and this is unfortunate but inevitable. When you use a trafine drill, the tip is to use a diameter that is bigger than implant diameter. Also, you do not use trafine drill full length. You use it up to about 70%. It's not used on this part. 
and then like doing tooth extraction the implant can be removed bone loss this is inevitable when you use trapwine drill hence implant placement at the same time as implant removal is possible however you cannot use implant that is the same diameter you need to use wider diameter implant also i've mentioned earlier that you only drill up to 70 percent so this part gets untouched just so you can get stability from the basal bone however there can be significant bone loss so it can be a problem in the past this was the only way to do implant removal these days a lot of implant removal kits are available from different companies from austin there is efr kit to easy implant removal kit this is external hex tissue level internal submerged type implant can all be removed if you use this then you can reduce the level of bone loss and do implant removal in a very clean way also you can place implant at the same time remover screw screwdriver remover body torque extension implant wrench and torque wrench this is the composition remover screw is connected to the implant and screwdriver is used here remover body is used counterclockwise direction and torque is applied and you remove the implant counterclockwise direction in the case of trafine very when you use it a significant defect that is bigger than the diameter of the implant can be formed regardless of any situation if you use trafine drill significant bone loss can occur so the defect can be quite significant Let's take a look at the defect size aspect. Let's look at the upper right area of this patient. Number 37, there seems to be a problem with the implant. With time, you can see that there's a lot of bone loss around here. When it looked at CT, significant buccal bone loss was detected. I removed the prosthesis on top of implant and on the mesial side of number 7 there was a huge calculus and because of that bone loss occurred perhaps it occurred the other way around. In order to reduce defect size EFR kit was used for implant removal. Remover screw is connected. Remover body is connected and by doing counterclockwise rotation implant removal can be done. The defect is like this. By using this, you can make a very small defect compared with using trafine drill. If you use the EFR kit and other similar kits, you can make a much smaller defect. After reflecting flap, as you can see, the thread lines are still visible. A bigger diameter implant was placed, bone graft was done, and surgery was completed. This is post-op panoramic image. And prosthesis was delivered. Let's look at post-op CT. As you can see, small defect was formed, so implant was placed easily. GPR was done at the same time. When you do implant removal, making a small defect can simplify the entire process. Using short and wide implant can be used for easy implant replacement.
At times, uh, there may be absolutely necessary to use trap fine drills, such as uh, when there is implanted tearing. However, in other cases, if you use kits like EFR kit, you'll be able to make a smaller defect after implant removal. This would uh, make the subsequent procedure more easy. Next is cluster effect. In 1991 and 1993, these cases were reported in some patients. Multiple implants failed for no reason. The primary cause was considered to be genetic or systemic factor, and most of the contributing factors were relevant to smoking. Roxism also did play a role, and in this case, the recommendation is to use a mouth protector. This is not something you come across very frequently next to titanium allergy. This is related to unexplainable implant failure. For some reason, implant may fail at times. The patients with allergy against titanium show facial flushing and non-keratinized proliferative lesion around the peri-implant soft tissue. Hypersensitivity against titanium can be a factor leading to implant failure. Today I've looked at other complications that can occur other than due to mechanical reasons. I've talked about unexplainable failures today. Regarding implant fracture, we can discuss for a significant period of time, and I also wanted to address complication. So I've talked about it in a very simple sense. If you want to go in deeper and study more, please come to offline seminar. I hope to have in-depth conversation with you. Thank you for watching. Thank you for your attention.